Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over how to apply and remove an alginate dressing. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel. So let's get started. So when you go to apply an alginate dressing, just like any other uh, wound, you want to cleanse and irrigate the wound and the peri wound, okay? You are going to then dry the peri wound with a sterile gauze. And if there is excess drain, um, fluid in the wound, you can take another sterile gauze and just kind of blotch it into there. Um to get the excess fluid, okay? Because a lot of times we're using alginate um, when the wound is, it does have some depth to it, okay? Kind of as a filler and it it's a high absorbance. So it's going to absorb a lot of fluid, okay? So you do cut this dressing, okay? You cut it to fit inside of the wound um, and you can cut it either into layers. They do have um, <clears throat> like your packing. So this would be like your packing that you can put inside of a wound. Um, and then they do have also the squares, the square alginate. They come um, either plain with no antimicrobials on them or they come with silver, um, which is an antimicrobial. So it, it does come in all different forms. There's all different brands. And that's why I've kind of categorized it as just an alginate and I'm not doing specific products because they're all the same. When it comes down to it, it's an alginate. You look, see, does it, is it a plain or does it have antimicrobial properties in it? Decide which one you need. Do you have an infection? Local infection, use an um, anti, a topical antimicrobial. Um, if there's no infection there, just use a plane. It's better to use plane if there's no infection, okay? It does allow the wound to heal faster. Um, so like I said, it can be cut, um, layer either the ribbon down inside of, um, like I've shown here, always make sure that there is a tail, okay? If the wound base is not visible, okay? Or if it's hard to see the wound base, make sure you're only using one piece inside of that wound, okay? Layer it back and forth because you do not want to lose this inside of a wound. You don't want to lose anything. So you always make sure that there's a ribbon outside of the wound so it can be easily removed, okay? Especially when there's undermining, sinus tracts, tunnels, you need to make sure that you are leaving a tail, okay? You do apply this dry into the wound um, and then just make sure that you're putting an appropriate cover dressing over top of it to maintain a moisture balanced wound, okay? Um, th this isn't, this is a dressing and then you need a secondary dressing over top of it uh, for moisture balance, okay? I did just also want to mention here um, with this picture, okay? See, we have our wound and then we have our peri wound around the outside. Now, if you're using this on a wound um, where you only really need one sheet, it's exudating a lot maybe, um, so you're putting this on, it can touch the peri wound, okay? Dressings can touch the peri wound tissue. It's not going to cause damage to that tissue, okay? Now, to remove this dressing, you're going to gently remove it with forceps. Now, it shouldn't be stuck in there, okay? We're using the alginate dressings for high exudating wounds. So this is not something that should be stuck in here. If you are noticing that it is getting stuck, either it needs to be left in longer because it can be left in for up to seven days or you need to be changing into a different dressing, okay? This should not be getting stuck. Although if the dressing does separate on removal, because you start pulling it here, if it does separate, just thoroughly irrigate the wound to remove all the dressing pieces. You might need to use your cotton tip applicator um, 
small amounts of gel are biodegradable, but you don't want the, these fibers left in the wound, okay? Um, it can cause issues down the road. Like I said, it can be left in for up to seven days. It shouldn't be sticking because it is meant for high exudating wounds. Um, once again, choose your dressing appropriately, whether uh, you have an infection, uh, use your nerds and stonies to determine an um, infection. I do have a link below if you're unsure of what nerds and stonies are. Um, and just make sure that you're managing it well, um, whether you have infection or no infection. Um, base your dressing choice and use of antimicrobials off of that. So I thought that I would just show you what alginate really looks like. So it's literally just fabric. It's quite thin, um, probably a mil of thickness, um, but it's it's very soft. Um, it is like, it's pullable though. So it's, it's reinforced and you can pull it quite well, um, but in certain directions, like it will come apart. So I am very cautious with using this um, in too deep of wounds, okay? I don't like particularly using this um, if, if you're worried about getting it out, okay? So it, it does, I, I find that it does come apart sometimes depending on, especially when it's wet, where you're pulling it. It's quite, but you can, you can pull it apart, right? So, um, and there is little fibers with it. I would just say be cautious with this, um, especially in like in tunnels, tunnel area. Make sure that they have a wide enough mouth where you can get everything out. Um, don't be putting it in too thin of areas is, is my suggestion. Now, there are um, different brands and whatnot. They are, they do become like a little bit stronger, but they all tend to kind of pull apart, okay? In general, um, through my experience, sorry, my alarm's going off. Um, through my experience, they can pull apart. So just be cautious with where where you're putting them um, for a wound and make sure that the uh, there's a wide enough area um, to be able to get it out, <clears throat> okay? Um, but that's all that I have for this video, guys. I hope you did find it helpful for your practice. And I hope to see you in my next video, guys. Bye for now.